you're watching the destruction in Gaza all around. The bombing. The shooting. Israel has this evening said it struck an ambulance in Gaza City, which it said was being used by Hamas. The aid not being let in, the lack of action from almost anyone. You scroll and cry. You make dua, you might decide to boycott, but in the bigger picture, it all seems a little bit insignificant. So you sit down and you ask yourself, what can I do for us? Israeli forces are carrying out a raid on Gaza's largest hospital, Al Shifa. It has been continuous bombing and firing. Uh... This video is specifically for the young men of the Ummah. And in it, I'm going to take you step by step and give you a practical guide on what you can do specifically to contribute to the Ummah and to contribute to helping your brothers and sisters that are suffering so much right now. And this is all even if right now you feel extremely powerless. So let's get into it. Bismillah. Okay, now I know a lot of you would like me to get straight into the meat and potatoes of what do I pick up and do right now. But shockingly, the biggest factor that will impact whether you have an impact, whether you actually do something, and whether you do something that's effective is actually your mindset and how you perceive the bigger picture and cause and effect. Let me explain. Most people, and even Muslims, they go about life thinking that they actually have control over what happens. They want a better job, so they apply for jobs. They want to get a job in the first place, they go to university and study. They want to get married, so they propose to women and they try and make themselves sound good when they meet them and this and that. They think they're in control. This is wrong. You see, the same thing applies to Gaza. People say to themselves, if only so-and-so got involved or so-and-so did a ceasefire, then it would all be better, things would improve. But the reality is Allah is in control of everything. And Allah is not in need of any army or any ceasefire to do anything. If Allah wanted, it would be over in a second. But through Allah's wisdom, he has a better plan for this ummah. Allah has the bigger picture of the dunya and the akhirah. And Allah knows and even says in multiple hadith, the insignificance of this life compared to the akhirah. So if people are suffering in this life, but they're better off in the akhirah, Allah knows the significance of that. And we even know it, for example, from the shaheed, the one who dies for the sake of Allah. What do they say after they've died for the sake of Allah and they're in Jannah and they're a happy place? What do they say? They said, I wish I could come back to the dunya. What for? Not for anything of enjoyment or comfort, but to be killed for the sake of Allah again. That is all that they would want to come back for. But that puts into perspective the suffering of people in this life versus what they will actually get as payback in the akhirah. So the first thing is to understand in your mind the insignificance of this dunya and how it's cursed anyway and how most of the good comes in the akhirah. So the fact that Allah could cause it to stop right now, but he is not doing that. And Allah wants the best for the ummah. And Allah is the most merciful on the ummah. And Allah is so kind and generous with this ummah. And Allah promises victory for this ummah. But still Allah doesn't stop it. It shows there's a bigger plan at play and we are not in control. It makes you realize Allah has a plan for this ummah. And Allah will never let his ummah down. Allah will take shuhada. Allah will give victories and he will give losses. But eventually it dawns on you when you're thinking like this. All this will happen by the will of Allah. But what will I do? How am I contributing? What am I doing in this scenario? Whenever people are at a low point, and that's certainly what it feels like right now, it means that the trajectory can very much go upwards. And Allah promised that to us. And the macro picture of victories and giving Ezra back to this ummah is in Allah's hands. But then you realize that could happen without me. I could play no role in that. And then you realize there is a huge opportunity here to make a contribution. Imagine knowing that whatever football team that is going to go on, not now, but in five, 10 years to be number one from nothing, they're going to work up and get there. Wouldn't you want to join that team now and be part of that journey? The same goes here. Except the crazy thing is that we know as a promise from Allah that this ummah will be victorious and this ummah is promised victory. So what are you doing? Not grabbing onto this opportunity and contributing as much as you can because it will happen with or without you. This is not about the oppressed. They don't need us. They have Allah. This is about you and I and the contribution that we will make 
to making this world a better place, to spreading the message of Islam, and to protecting and defending the oppressed people all around the world. This is about us having something to say for ourselves on Yom al Qiyamah and being able to contribute to the victory that Allah has promised the Muslims. That right there is number one, and that is the mindset shift that you need to have to really contribute. Okay, now number two, after you've had that mindset shift, you realize that you really need to take responsibility for what you're gonna do and the contribution you're gonna have, and you need to really bring something to the table there. And I don't mean this red pill rubbish of earning six figures, having a six pack, being six foot, which is basically being a slave to what women think of you. I challenge you instead to become a slave of how pleased Allah is with you. So what does that mean practically? It means not living life on autopilot, just trying to get a job and get a better job and get married and have kids and buy a house and save up money and feel good about yourself when you gave 500 pounds in charity. No, none of that. Throw that in the bin. You're going to work on your money and your family life and all that. That's taken for granted. But you've got to ask yourself, in what way am I going to contribute? What will my life project be? I'm a big fan of focus. And we're always going to have different areas of our life that we have to work on. But what is that main focus that we aim to really make a big contribution in? We become really good at it. And that is where we make a dent in the world. Focus is key here. And by the way, as a side point, I'll give you a little secret. If you have a life project and you're really working on it, making progress on it, that will actually be a really big reason for you to get married in the first place if you're not married. It's one of the most attractive things to a good woman. But anyway, what are some examples of a life project? It could be building a charity organization. It could be memorizing the Quran and making sure your kids and the kids in your community are all raised upon the Quran. It could be studying the deen of Allah and applying in your life and teaching it to others. It could be building a business that follows the principles of Islam, making a lot of money, hiring a lot of people, and then using that money to lobby or for propaganda or media or whatever it is. It could even be something that's just based in your local community and making sure the young men in that area are raised upon Islam with the Islamic way of thinking and viewing the world. Then whatever path they take in life, you're gonna have some of that edger because you made sure that the Islamic values are implemented in whatever they do in their life. But now I can hear some of you saying, and this is a good question. What if I have no idea what my life project could be? I'm just working this job. I've been in this career for like three, four years, making a bit of money. I enjoy myself whenever I can. And I play a few sports and I go to the gym and I'm trying to get married, this and that. What could I do? What's my life project? That's too big. Well, I'm glad you asked. A life project is something that could take until you're 30, 35 to work out exactly what it is. And you build up your 20s to getting to the point where you're actually skilled enough, you're experienced enough that you know what to do firstly, and you're actually good at it. And then you can spend your 30s and 40s, 50s really contributing to it. So what do you do up until you're 30 or 35 when you find what your life project will be? You build up. You start with good intentions, with the intention that I'm going to find my life project. I'm going to build a life project and I'm going to stand inshallah in front of Allah with that project on me. And number two, after having good intentions, is to take action, any action. Volunteer at a mental health charity, memorize the Quran, start a business, enroll in a Sharia program, learn the Arabic language, start mentoring men younger than you in life with whatever experience and wisdom you can give them. If you have the right intentions and you're active doing some of these things I mentioned over years and years, there is no way you won't find something that you enjoyed more or you were better at or you became more passionate about and then you can drill down and help them. If you are active and you do a few of these things in your 20s, then most people would find their life project. It's just that most people don't try. Okay, so now you've realized that Allah's plan will happen with or without you, and you actually want to contribute to that and have a part to play. And then you've also realized that maybe you've been living life a little bit on autopilot with too little ambition, and you want to actually have a life project and get something started. But in the meantime, what do you do? And this is it, point number three. Build a life that you will be proud of on Yom al -Qiyam. That doesn't mean don't get a job and work, don't get married, don't have kids, don't chill now and then. It means build a life that bit by bit, habit by habit, you've stacked so many good habits that please Allah in your life that your average day includes remembering Allah, istighfar, prayer, dua, sincere dua, fasting, reading Quran, studying the word of Allah, volunteering, serving your parents. These are little habits that everyone should have in their life 
even while building your life project and even while working and having a family. And by building this life that you can be proud of, that is following what Allah told you in your day-to-day -day life, you've lifted some of the burden of sins off the ummah. You become a better worshipper of Allah. You've empowered your dua. So when you make your dua for your brothers and sisters, you know how to make it properly. You can do it in Arabic. You have more sincerity. Your iman is higher. And you've given Allah a reason to open the doors for you to have more and more impact because of these small efforts that you've put in every single day. Because of course, contributing is a privilege that not everyone gets. So we've got having the right mindset, having a life project or at least building towards one and building these great habits so your average day is pleasing to Allah. And now of course, you do still have to deal with everyday life. And I will tell you something, the burden of paying bills and mixing with bad people in a bad environment really holds you back from your potential and reaching the ambitions that you dream of. So I've actually found an incredibly powerful hack that can help you get around those burdens and you can learn about it right away in this video here. So go watch that now to see how you can overcome the burdens of the everyday slog of work, nine to five, commuting, this and that. See you there.